In this video, I'm hopefully going to explain how layers work within Luminar Neo. Now, they are the same in every other editing package, but as every other editing package is different and they all have their own limitations, there is certain considerations you have to make when you are actually editing, especially a composite in Luminar Neo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hopefully explain why. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a photo and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add the image of this car. Click open and that drops in. That car is my base layer. This is no longer movable. If I add any other layer at all, let's go in for that one and we add that in and take that up to 100%. I can't move that one below my base layer and I can't move my base layer above it because this is what the software is reading as your canvas shall we say that's your canvas so it's always best if you're doing composites or any type of compositing work to work from a blank canvas now if you watch the last video of mine you'll notice that I used grey layers and now I prefer the grey layers, so that's why I use them. I find they've got more versatility in them. But if you consider the grey layer as a blank canvas, then we start adding the images on top. So that is how your layer system would work. And I'm going to delete these, remove layer, and then I'm going to go back to catalogue and I'm going to move to trash. So I'm going to add a photo this time and add image. Now I mentioned in the last video it was add a grey layer. I'm just going to show you what you can do if you don't have any grey layers available. So I'm going to start with this one here. I'm going to click open. Not a grey layer at all. So here we have the blank canvas. As yet it's not a blank canvas. So I'm just going to make a blank canvas and I'm going to get into develop. I'm going to turn the exposure down, push the smart, turn the smart contrast, push the smart contrast, turn the highlights down, turn the shadows down, go into the blacks, turn the blacks down, and turn the whites down as well. And let's go in and make it black and white. So basically what we are doing is we're removing as much of this as possible. Go back into develop and I'll actually grab that there and take that across to there. So now we have a blank canvas. Although you can see the picture there, this is a blank canvas. And that's why it's a good idea to actually add or create a series of blank canvases. So now that we've got our blank canvas, we can get back in and add the car. And there we have the car that comes in. We'll just make it the size that I want it roughly about there and roughly around that area. Let's take it up to there. So that, as you know, I can't move below. But if I want to put a background behind this, I can go in and I can take that background. And in the case of this, I'm actually just going to scale this up. And we'll bring that down to there. And we'll bring that down. And the reason I wanted that is I didn't want the white at the top there. So if I take that up to 100%, we can see everything. I'll just move it up a tiny bit further. We can see that there, but we can't see the car. I'll close that down. Move the car above it. We now see the car. So that's the reason underneath there that you really need to have a blank canvas, shall we call it. And I'll probably call that the name of the video as well. So that's the reason for that. Now what I can do is I want two of these here because I want a reflection. So I'm not going to get through a full edit. I'll just show you the final image. But I'll show you why I'm doing everything just in this. So that's dropped in there. I haven't moved anything. I'm just going to bring that in to around about there. Bring this one in to around about there and when it's nearly sharp that's me nearly where I want to be 
because there's no auto align yet but that's it it's perfectly sharp now and what I'm going to do you'll see by the final image basically what I'm going to do is flip this over because there's reflections here in the background and use that as a reflection and I'll actually speed the edit of this one up because it's layers that I want to look at in this video and hopefully explain how they work and hopefully by that short example there you can see that this blank canvas here cannot be moved at all it can't go up although it looks as if it can it won't move so always start with a blank canvas when you are doing your edits it's the best way to make anything come together especially when it's a, a, a compositing image if you bring in a single image edit into Luminar Neo and you'll never be able to move it. You can add more layers on top of it, but you can't move it. It's always going to be there. Photoshop, for example, you can unlock the base layer, doesn't matter what it is, and move it around the entire layers panels. It's entirely up to you when you do that and if you do that. But in Luminar Neo, if you're going to do composites, you have to work with a blank canvas. Okay, I'm pausing the video here just to let you know that the Luminar crashed and it crashed because of the fine detail work that I was trying to get out of the car. So what I did was I opted to go in and make it a PNG and I used Photoshop to do that. So I've brought them back in and as you can see, they are two separate layers in Photoshop. So that's me at the final layer for this. It's not exactly turned out the way I was hoping it would and that's for a few different reasons and mainly the reason is because Luminar is not a compositing editor. What this video was actually aimed at was looking at different layers and how you apply them and where you apply them and just the different effects. If you move these right through you should see it changing slightly each time and I move that down to there and I can put it behind there as well so you'll see that changing each time however slightly it is you notice it gets a lot brighter here because this isn't a screen blend so if I take that down through there it's not having to work as hard to blend through everything and it's only blending through there so I'm going to leave it at that one that one's actually okay there. If you remember that when you're doing composites you need to create a blank canvas. Now this image here is not a blank canvas but I showed you how we actually got to that layer and that was just by bringing in a picture and turning it in this case entirely dark. So that's it. Hopefully that helps you understand the layers a little better. It might seem a little bit convoluted in the amount of layers that we have but for that it just lets you see what you can do I can drop that layer there behind I quite like that because that now is bringing the car back up and it's still in there and it's still giving me the light leak that I wanted but there you go so that there for me is actually better than the original image that I stopped with because I've now got more tonality in the car. Move them around, play around with them to see how they work better. But always remember, if you're doing a composite, create a blank canvas 
and add your first layer there. I move it up, I move it up again, the card disappears. Now that looks okay, but the reason I put a reflection in was simply just to show you how to do a reflection. I can turn the opacity of the reflection down if I want, make it disappear even more. Now you can see a couple of mistakes in here, but I'm actually not bothered because it is the layers that we are looking at. I hope that's helped you get a better understanding of layers. Thanks again for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.